Join me for a moment as I ask you to picture a scene of colourful hot air balloons silently drifting in the sky. This was my initial concept for the art commission of the Sky's the Limit project in Tally University Hospital. I love working on a collaborative project that draws people together. As they become involved, they can see how an interesting artwork develops. I decided to head up the mountains for inspiration when I saw the proposed space for the project. I guess we're lucky in Dublin that you don't have to go too far to see the mountains. And having often seen gliders flying over the feather beds, in my mind's eye, I started substituting these for hot air balloons. The idea of escapism really intrigued me. My task was to find a way to create an installation that would captivate and inspire the viewer. Thinking of the hospital atrium, I could easily imagine daydreaming over a cup of coffee, how beautiful it would be to see a vibrant array of colourful balloons calmly drifting by. We organised a colouring competition to gather a variety of balloon designs and this was launched in the hospital with Mairead Shields, chair of the Mead Foundation, who kindly funded the project. The colouring competition was open to patients, staff and the wider Tala community and was extensively advertised by our local partnerships. We had an overwhelming response with over 290 original designs from entrants ranging from 2 to 85 years. The judging panel had the difficult task of selecting 39 designs that would be transformed onto the 3D balloons. Prototypes were made of the balloons at different stages to give an idea of the processes involved, from building up the paper mache layers to base painting to adding the colourful design. Everything was displayed in the hospital atrium during a balloon making workshop on Culture Night 2018. More workshops were organised at the hospital for the arts team to make the balloons. It was really important that we achieved quality assurance standards and uniformity. Specialised extra large balloons were sourced and wrapped in cling film so they could be easily removed and reused. Seven individual layers of paper mache were applied, allowing each layer to dry overnight. Wire mesh was embedded between the layers in the top section of the balloon. This provided a solid structure and acted as a stabiliser for the hanging point once complete. Two layers of white paint were applied before the decorative design was first drawn and only then could the colourful design begin to be painted. It didn't take long to get a system going and we had lots of fun along the way. We held a series of enthusiastic and busy workshops at Rural Red Art Centre, where parents and siblings of children who had created the designs got involved. While working alongside the artists, Everyone discovered a great sense of colourful exploration and fun for unleashing all their creative talents. One particular challenge for the arts team was transferring some of the 2D visual designs onto the 3D balloons. Patients and staff were fascinated to see the ongoing development of the balloons as we worked on them throughout the hospital. As an artist involved in the dialysis unit for many years, I've experienced firsthand the important therapeutic benefits of participating in the arts for patients. I always got a great response while I was transporting the balloons through the hospital. 
delivering them to staff and relatives who decided to paint the designs at home. Lots of people took their inspiration for their designs from a variety of subject matter, from exotic birds and flowers to abstract shapes and forms. And here Barbara is showing us her sugar skull tattoo on her leg, where she got her idea from. Staff loved the opportunity to participate in creative workshops. We held some in the hospital canteen, allowing staff to pop in and do a bit of painting during their coffee breaks or at lunchtime. There was a great atmosphere and sense of camaraderie and we soon discovered there was a lot of creative talent at TUH. Storage of the balloons presented us with one of the biggest challenges. Without a dedicated art space, the balloons had to be continually transported from A to B. Consequently, once the arts office was bulging, then my own house and my mother-in-law's house became invaded with large balloons in bedrooms, living rooms and kitchens. Another interesting stage was exploring various prototypes for the baskets. We experimented with different materials, eventually settling on a washable oilcloth, which most suited our needs. A layer of perspex was inserted in both the basket and the balloon openings to ensure no birds or flies became entangled. Designing and developing the hanging system to meet all the compliance standards and without compromising the aesthetic of the installation involved many meetings we needed certificates of conformity and load bearing for all the individual parts. It was quite difficult going into building suppliers trying to source the various components, so I usually brought along one or two balloons in order to explain the concept. Chain and rope supplied most of the hooks, screws and over 215 metres of metal wire, and the rest I found at masonry fixings. Strong collaboration was needed between ourselves, the TUH Estates and Facilities Department and CES Solutions, the installation contractor, who chemically fixed the tension wires spanning between the two atrium walls.
Parade, the Mead Foundation uh, have supported a large number of arts and health projects in TUH and we chose to make this particular project um, a collaborative one to include patients, staff, their families and visitors but also to include the wider Tala community. What do you feel this approach brought to the project? Well, I think it really made the project by having so many people involved. There were 650 people involved in the project altogether um, and it brought a great buzz to the hospital and to the community. Um, staff were absolutely thrilled to be part of it and there's one area that I would pick out is the um, post room and every time you went into the post room you were asked to fill in a little section of a balloon um, so it was a totally collaborative um, project. Um, I also thought having the children involved in it was, was super. Um, the other thing that it brought was uh, highlighting the foundation, the Meath Foundation and, and what it contributes to the arts in Tala Hospital. Maureen, thinking about the initial um, concept presented to the Mead Foundation back in 2018, requesting funding for floating hot air balloons in the hospital atrium. Um, may I ask, has the final spectacle met with those early expectations? You see, it certainly has. It has way, uh, outweighed my uh, vision of it. Um, it is so vibrant and um, staff comment, you know, when I look up there, it makes me feel happy. Um, yeah. You know, I feel a little more relaxed looking up there. I could spend hours looking and I see different aspects of each balloon as I look up. Can I ask, what do you see as the benefits of commissioning a professional artist for a project like this? Well, I think the professional artist brought a huge amount to this project. Um, I, I don't think any of us ever envisaged what the project was going to look like. Um, certainly I didn't. Um, when you talked about the sky's the limit and balloons in the atrium, I was thinking, oh my goodness, like how are we going to cope with balloons? But having said that, the work that Lucia has done on this project is absolutely amazing. And um, every day that everybody comes to work, they look up into the atrium. And what I like about it is that as you go up the higher levels, you see a different perspective of the balloons. So that, that is another aspect of this project. And um, of course, it is in the atrium outside our office. And um, it's lovely to look out if you want to just take a moment to think about what you're trying to work on to look out and see the balloons and you can be anywhere in the world. In relation to the final documentary video, um, what can my perspective bring to the viewer that is in addition to the installation piece in itself? Well, I think, uh, Lucia, you have um, a wealth of knowledge as to how this project was developed. And I think to explain how the concept came to you. Um, hot air balloons, like uh, when you mention a hot air balloon, you think of out in the sky. So, you know, you really are thinking about, um, you know, being out in the open air. And I think the atrium here in the hospital has given that perspective because it's, it's such a height that you're able to, to float the balloons um, high up in the, uh, in the atrium. Um, I also think that it was a great collaborative project. Um, there were just so many people involved in it. And um, I understand that the youngest person involved was two years old. <laughs> and then the eldest person, or the oldest person was 87. And that was, you know, out in the community as well. Um, so you were drawing people in who had never been in Tala University Hospital or who had any connection with the hospital. So, it, you know, it has worked very well. And um, your approach to, to the whole project was just wonderful. Lucy, thanks for being here for the interview. Um, I just want to ask you, Tala University Hospital had a vibrant arts and health programme. And can you highlight the importance of including the arts 
within a hospital setting for patients, staff and visitors. Well here in Tyler University Hospital our arts programme is an essential and key part of our healthcare delivery. Research has shown that where you have arts and health you have a, a healing environment for patients. It's shown to reduce blood pressure, reduce stress with the release of endorphins and uh, basically help recover in a, in a quicker time frame. So why wouldn't we uh, provide that environment for our patients? In relation to our staff, it's a much more pleasant environment uh, yeah. and the fact that the arts programme constantly change, for example, the pictures along Hospital Street means that there's a, a new environment uh, every few weeks, which is great and starts a conversation. Mm -hmm. And hopefully for visitors, um, it becomes a surprise because they expect it to be a cold and sterile environment. Are there any stories or comments perhaps you would like to share with us about the project? Well, you see, particularly in relation to the sky's the limit uh, display, I remember it was installed over a weekend and on the Monday morning I came into work as the sunlight was coming in through the skylights and it was magical and it was so uplifting and I'm delighted that uh, so many staff have the opportunity to see it because obviously it's in a, the main atrium of the hospital and visitors, uh, staff, patients alike all comment on uh, what a positive impact it has here at TUH. Um, and also I love the fact that each balloon has a story and to remind us that we are people caring for people. So it's a constant reminder of that. So thank you. I love trees and I paint them a lot. My colourful tree design also represents the lungs and the heart, which are both vital to life. I painted the balloon at home, which was a lovely experience and intrigued my children. Tom just liked the colours. It was for the fun of it and drawn on a rainy day. It was great to paint with all the family at the workshops and also interesting to see others creating their balloons. Tom says he feels proud to see it up there and as his mom and staff member, it brings a nice smile to my face too. What inspired me is the beauty of the spring in Ireland. The first time coming here, I saw lots of beautiful flowers, but the tulips under a nice bright sun really stood out in my eyes. It was enough to make you fall in love with Ireland. Emer created her balloon while she was on the oncology day ward receiving chemotherapy. And I think that despite everything she was going through, she was still able to create a design that reflected her state of mind at that time. Positivity and hope and joy in the things that meant the most to her. Before choosing my design, I looked at lots of images of hot air balloons. So my ideas progressed onto something different with the dragonfly, insects and lily pads. Once I started painting, the ideas just flowed. I love seeing it there as I walk by it when I'm up on level three, particularly as it's a great talking point with patients. I enjoyed creating my own balloon, but really the highlight for me was the balloon for everyone that many people contributed to. A little persuasion helped those who wouldn't otherwise have participated to create something. I think they were all secretly proud of their contribution and it was a joy to see. When I look up, I feel like Mary Poppins. I want to be up there, floating, weightless among the balloons. We spend so much time looking down, the balloons give people a reason to look up. As I look up at the finished installation, it is amazing to reflect back on all the twists and turns I experienced throughout the process. One of the most important artistic challenges and key to my research came about during the design and development phase around the hanging structure. My goal was to design a system that would suspend the hot air balloon safely and securely whilst maintaining the visual spectacle that offers the viewer a dreamlike sense of escapism. So tricky, but I am very pleased with the final outcome. You know, my family and I lived with balloons for over a year, both metaphorically and physically. They were constantly in my sight and on my mind as I worked on them and through the logistics of prototypes, materials, workshops, completion schedules and the like. Funnily enough though, no matter what stage I was at, I could always clearly envisage the final installation in my mind's eye. I still laugh when I think back to one particular car journey made in the early stages of the project during a heatwave. 
One very large balloon positioned beside me suddenly burst out from its interior, cracking the outer layers of paper mache like it was a living thing. It obviously reacted to the intense heat, but believe me, it was the last thing I expected to happen while driving the car. From then on, I carefully covered up the balloons when traveling with them to and from the hospital. I'd like to pay tribute to the great team of artists, funders and my family, all who really encouraged and supported me throughout this arts and health project. Including so many people from such a wide community was a wonderful experience. It opened the project to a broad spectrum of ages and diversity. I especially loved interacting with the families at the workshops when they were painting and creating together. There were often moments of complete silence as participants busily engaged their imaginations with the art process. For me, those were truly special moments I will remember and treasure from my time working on the Sky's the Limit project in TUH.